trickle in for a little bit and we'll start another webinar. Thank you. Hello, welcome. My name is Marisol Ornelas and I'm the Associate Director of Enrollment Management and we thank you for joining us tonight. We are so excited to welcome you all and spend the next 45 minutes or so together. This is our final webinar in a series that will highlight our students' experience on being a founding student at Hillbrook Upper School in the first year of, the, of our high school expansion. We invite your family to ask questions throughout the event using the Q&A feature. After our presentation, we will leave time for questions and answers. Tonight, we are joined by Mark Silver, our head of school, Mark, Mike Peller, head of our upper school, and several of our students in our founding ninth grade class. And to begin, I would like to invite Mark Silver, the head of our Hillbrook School, for a few remarks. Thanks, Marisol. Hi, my name is Mark Silver. As she said, I am the head of school here at Hillbrook School, and I'm just really excited to have you here with us tonight to hear from some of our founding students talk about this amazing year that they are having as part of the first ever ninth grade at Hillbrook School. A little over a year ago, we did an event where we had we talked with founding students but at that point, we didn't actually have our own students. And so we talked to some students from Nueva School up the peninsula to hear what, um, they, what their experience had been like 10 years ago. And it is so exciting now to have our own students who can start to give you a sense of what this experience is like. Um, a few things that I would note, you know, over the course of the fall, I've been struck by the number of these moments that we've had. Um, early in the fall, there was a, a group of students who said, hey, we need to have a, a homecoming. And uh, the head of, uh, Mike Peller, the head of the upper school, and they looked back and they said, well, hey, let's, let's figure that out. And within days, they'd pulled together a homecoming week and a homecoming dance. Um, another thing that struck me early on was they, they, we did a uh, play, and more than half of the class was involved in pulling this play together. Most importantly, like what strikes me as I think about this group, there's kind of three things that I think you'll notice as you listen to these kids talk about being founding students. One, um, this is a really unique group of kids um, and they are drawn to this moment, to this kind of spirit of being founders. As a school, our core values are be kind, be curious, take risks and be your best. And I think particularly this spirit of taking risks is something that I see as we've brought together this amazing group of kids. Second of all, um, they will speak about, I am sure, the extraordinary group of faculty that have joined this group this year. Um, the faculty, like the students, are a, a group of people who were drawn to this opportunity, this incredibly unique opportunity to be a founding member of an upper school. And so um, again, you'll hear a little bit about them. Um, and then finally, um, it's, uh, there's just a sense of ownership that these students and the faculty, and then you'll hear from our head of upper school in a moment, have about this experience. And it, it truly is, I've, I've spent years in education and I've never quite experienced what these kids have, and, and, and uh, teachers have experienced over the last few months. And so I'm just really excited for you to hear directly from them. Um, and so with that, I will, I will not speak anymore. Um, I'm going to welcome to the stage our amazing head of upper school, Mike Peller, who is going to serve as the MC for the evening. Thanks so much, Mark. Um, it is it is great to be here. Um, you know, I spent uh, I spent today uh, bookended with 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 founding, um, and and what I mean by that is this morning the first thing I did was have a meeting with a student, Kai, one of our ninth graders, who is excited to start a debate team, uh, and I said, bring some students that are interested and let's figure out how to do this. 
Um, she showed up early before school with a number of other students, 10 other students. And by the end of that day, we had a plan for how we're going to execute this new debate team, uh, found a coach that's going to be working with us. Uh, and it's that is the spirit of what it means to be a, a student here. Um, I bookended the day. I ended the day uh, with the faculty as we were like designing and launching what will be our spring immersives where we're going to be traveling with students um, to Argentina and Alaska. This idea of creating, of building a school, a high school that we all um, hope that we could attend that we hope that you are interested in attending, the idea of building the school together, this idea of co-creation is something that we do and take very seriously. Uh, and one thing that I think is really important to say is, um, you know, the founding classes are the first four classes. Um, and, you know, you and the audience as, as, as folks who are looking at this for next year will be critical members, critical founders, shaping the culture, shaping programs, leaving an indelible mark over the, over the school that will last for decades. Uh, and so we're excited for you to learn more about what it looks like to be a student. As Marisol mentioned, we've had a number of webinars already sharing about various aspects of our program, um, but it was intentional and important that we end with the most important thing, which is our students. Um, we have a number of students who are going to share uh, their experiences, so I'd love to welcome them onto the stage. Wonderful, welcome. So we have we have two more students actually who will be joining us shortly. They are uh, finishing a game, a basketball game at Menlo. So hopefully they'll be able to join for a bit. Um, but to get us started, um, could you each introduce yourself, share what middle school you attended and give a quick highlight from the year so far? Hi, uh, my name is Millie. Um, I went to Keys Middle School, and a highlight so far from this year would probably be the fall immersive. I was in Art as Activism, and I think just like learning about City as a Classroom really jump started like my love for the school, and I really enjoyed it. Hi, I'm Maya. I live, I've been going to Hillbrook uh, since the uh, sixth grade, and uh, I'd say a big highlight for me was the mock trial last Friday. So there was a prosecution team and defendant team, and I was on uh, the prosecution. And basically the prosecution team was like saying, hey, humanity is responsible for climate change. And it was like this big debate that was multi-month long. And it was just a lot of hard work. And I think a lot of teamwork in an awesome way to culminate the first semester. And I don't think anyone really can forget that day because there was just a lot going on during it. Um, my name is Chloe. I'm, I live in Los Gatos and I went to Hillbrook Middle for middle school. Um, a highlight um, so far this year has been the opportunity to engage in authentic scientific research and that being through our biochemistry program and then also through our science club, which I help lead and I help found, um, where we work on editing manuscripts that will inevitably be published specifically around like environmental science stuff, which is really cool. Um, and then also opportunities that the faculty have given us to also sort of reach out to out of school um, professors to sort of do research there. So there's like a lot of opportunity to do really cool science stuff. And that's definitely been a highlight for me. My name is uh, Vivi and I went to the girls middle school and something like one, one of the highlights from my year uh, was uh, the mock trial. I was on the defense side and I was proud of how I opened our argument and presented all of our points we were gonna make throughout the argument. Uh, my name's Jackson. I'm from Synapse Middle School. Um, I really like the fall immersive. I was in the water group. Uh, I just found it really, really cool and really, really fun uh, that we were able to spend so much time on, like, being able to go outdoors and feel what it's like to kind of be part of, like, city as a classroom, like Millie said, uh, which I really liked, yeah. Thanks all. Um, and and so for the folks listening, um, I, I imagine you're here because you're you're making the important sort of consideration of, of where to go next year for high school. Uh, and that that process, the process of learning about schools, of applying to schools, um, is it, it is it's a very um, uh, you know it's a significant step uh, as you kind of uh, make it make a, a lot of work to understand what it is that you care about, what it is that you are looking for, what is what is it is that you are seeking. Uh, and we, we hope that you're taking this um, investigation really seriously and, and learning a lot about 
um, both both us as well as other schools so you can make a great decision. Um, in thinking about making a decision, I'd love to hear from each of you, why did you choose Hillbrook? Uh, I can start. Um, I chose Hillbrook because first of all, I live in San Jose and Hillbrook High is located in San Jose. So I felt that that was right, like living in the community that I'm in. Also, um, it's great that I'm learning in my city, kind of adding on to that. And then after hearing the core values, which I think someone said at the beginning, um, I think that the core values really align with like what my family has taught me. So it kind of really felt like the right fit for me. Thanks, Millie. Uh, for me, the main reason was uh, academic. Uh, I'm very passionate about math, and I felt that the school would let me pursue math curriculum as far as I wanted to go and at my own pace, and it's been supporting me through that. Um, I think the reason that I chose, well, I always sort of knew I was going to go to Hillbrook. My family is very involved with the school, but what made me really excited to start, like, to go was... Um, when I got to take a sample lesson with our science teacher judge, I know I'm talking about science again, but I just, I really love science and I really love the way that Hillbrook does science. Um, and just being able to take that sample lesson and realize like just how outstanding the faculty is. And I just, I don't think I get that experience anywhere else and specifically for science, like the amount of hands-on research we do is definitely really important. Um, I knew I wanted to like be a part of a school that like used the city as a classroom but I specifically chose Hillbrook because I wanted to build like a school from the ground up and be like a part of a, f a founding class I knew that like I knew there would be like a framework but I wanted to like fill it in which I, I just thought it sounded cool uh, I chose Hillbrook Upper um, because it's focus on making change, uh, not just talking about making change, but actually taking action. Um, yeah. Vivi, I'd love to go back to what, what you said. But first of all, thanks for those great answers. And, and I'm so glad that you're here uh, at the school. Um, uh, Vivi, you mentioned about like that there's a, there's a framework for the school, but there's a lot of opportunities for each of you to fill it in, um, to, to make it your own, to make it our own school. Um, and, and sort of thinking about that, I'd, I'd love to hear, you know, thinking about yourselves as founding students, as, as founders of the high school, what, what have you helped shape so far? Um, so I helped uh, sh like shape the first uh, Hillbrook dance. We had a homecoming and we I like was in charge of like the communications and making sure everyone communicated. And so we had to figure out the location, the food um, and like, we and like the theme we had to like figure out everything we didn't really have like um any like i mean mike you helped us like uh figure out like our budget but after that we kind of just had to figure it out and you did a great job doing it how about others um i think a really cool co-curricular opportunity that we've gotten this year has been um um, the Scott Center has partnered with the University of Pencil Pennsylvania, not Pennsylvania, geez, um, to run a social entrepreneurship fellowship where students can deep dive into one issue and really do like authentic or not authentic, but oh, well, yes, authentic um, research about an issue that really matters to them and figure out a solution for what they can do about it. Um, and I'm currently working on a project where I'm looking at how um, underrepresentation of minority groups in clinical trials leads to bias in large language model artificial intelligence, specifically in like medical settings. Um, and that's definitely not an opportunity that I think most students get. And I think it's really unique to Hillbrook that we somehow got a way to experience that through like a school thing instead of out of school, which is really interesting and fun. So, yeah. Well, a lot of that is part of our culture, Chloe. I mean, we, we, we know that young students, uh, you all are capable of doing amazing things. And it's, we see it's our job to like create the conditions, create the support to allow you to really go free and, and do all those wonderful things. And, which you are. Um, Maya, how about for you? Uh, something that I think I contributed to majorly is a hero club, which stands for helping everyone reach out. I am one of the moderators, so I'm one of the leaders in the making of the club and what we talk about. It's a gay straight alliance club. Basically, that's what it summarizes. And I think something I've helped shape is I help shape traditions and what we talk about. Like, we're not just talking about like, like we're going over like in-depth queer history very often 
And I have been helped in being a part of that and facilitating that. And that's something I'm proud of. Thanks, Maya. Millie? So I actually haven't really like led anything yet. That's kind of not typically the kind of thing that I like to do, but I have helped a lot with like building other things up, which I think is also really important. Like I've helped the fashion and business club start. Um, I was in the first play and I was my friend Caperton's campaign manager for um, her student council uh, like campaign. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I um, help create the skate club. Um, so it's scootering and skating. We go to a um, skate park that's really close to the school every Monday, and we just kind of hang out and have a lot of fun. Um, I also helped with the automotive club. So uh, Sloan and I, which is a fellow um, student at Hillbrook, if you were guessing, <laughs> um, uh, we're making go-karts. Um, yeah, it's, it's been really fun um, being able to kind of help see that from the ground up. Um, and we're hoping that we'll get a really cool product that we can show you guys in the future. It, it, I mean, I, I, know, I know I get to see this all the time and, and hear this all the time, but it really is inspiring hearing all of the different things that you all have done in, in just, just a handful of months. Um, I, I can only imagine like what, will, what you, each of you will have done uh, in the next three and a half years um, by the time you graduate. I know it will be remarkable. Um, one of the questions that we get a lot from prospective families, uh, you know, they, they, they see the opportunities of founding, which you have made so abundantly clear right there. Um, but they wonder, you know, if, if going to a, a, a new school, a school next year that will have just ninth and 10th graders, they wonder, like, will there be some sort of compromise of the opportunities that exist in co-curriculars? In other words, like, you know, would go. You know, would going to Hillbrook High School, which is new, opposed to a larger school, would they be giving up opportunities? Um, and I, I and I, I always say no. The, like the opportunities are rich and wide. Um, and so I'd love for some of you to share what you've already been able to do this year, both inside and outside of school, in the context of co-curriculars. Maya, do you want to get us started? Uh, yeah. Uh... While I was involved in performing arts, I was also in the cross country team. And I'm not, I joined it just for like the PE credit. And since we're in such a small school and I hang out with people I probably wouldn't have hung out with, I got really close to everyone I felt on the team. And I have a lot of friendships that I am that are still lasting till today. And it was like a really good confidence booster. Like I didn't expect to enjoy this thing as much as I did. And I play guitar outside of school. I've been taking it for years. And I haven't really had that many opportunities to perform because of COVID. And uh, I'd say Hillbrook has opened up many like ways and avenues for me to perform, like like in the jazz band or in like res or in like performances like the winter concert. Hillbrook has opened itself up to that. Thanks, Maya. How, how about for you, Chloe? Um, yeah, I think one of the really interesting co-curricular opportunities that I've gotten is I actually got the opportunity to speak at a national conference a couple of weeks ago when I talked about um, sort of my experience with like documentation around immersives. Um, and that was a really interesting opportunity for me. And I got to learn like a lot of really valuable public speaking skills. Um, and that was, yeah, that was definitely a highlight for me. I felt really accomplished after that because I don't think like a lot of ninth graders get to do that. And it was just really fun and really, yeah, it was awesome. I loved it. I, I, yeah. I, I will say I, I got to, as you know, got to do the presentation with you, Chloe. And at the end there was a you know, loud applause. And it was that kind of thrilling moment where a lot of the people from the conference got up and sort of rushed forward to talk to the presenters, right? Like, so I was presenting with Chloe uh, and I was like ready to talk to all these people. And, um, and they all just walked right past me and right to Chloe to ask her about the experience. Um, and it really was because you did such a compelling job uh, sharing your work. Um, Millie, can you share about for you? Yeah, so um, like coming into Hillbrook, I wasn't sure how developed the performing arts would be because I'm very into that. But I quickly found out that I could join choir and I did the play. Um, but in addition to that, I've uh, been doing 
dance and ballet for a really long time now. And my studio is in San Jose. So we had the San Jose Nutcracker this year at the California Theater next to Nirvana Soul. And so I've still been able to balance school and dance. And it's just been really great. I, I do want to jump in there. I mean, one of the things that we were really intentional in designing the high school was thinking about wellness and balance. Um, and, and a couple of you have already spoken to that, your ability to continue some of these co-curriculars, both the ones that we're offering in school and outside of school. Uh, and I was so impressed by you, Millie, when we were doing the Alibis, our fall production. Um, and, and I got to play a small role in it, which was fun. So at the end, I was there rehearsing with you all. Uh, and you would finish rehearsal. And then as everyone else was getting picked up to go home, you would walk over to the studio to do your dance uh, and yeah. still show up the next day with your work uh, well done and, and ready for school. It's in incredibly impressive. Um, Jackson, how about for you? Uh, yeah. So when I was first looking at the school, I, I as a soccer player, um, I've been playing for about 10 years now. Um, I thought I was going to have a hard time being able to make it back for my practices, um, which is not the case at all. Uh, I take the train every day and it's been super, super easy being able to get back with plenty of time, um, to spare. Uh, yeah, overall, no problems. Um, along with that, I have been able to play basketball for the school along alongside of playing soccer competitively. Um, so they've been doing a really good job kind of uh, making sure that I have enough time to do homework, to do soccer, to do basketball, and whatever I wanted to do, along with just getting everything done. Um, and done to the best of my ability. Um, sadly, this year there was no soccer, but we are definitely getting that done. Uh, Mr. Peller and I have been talking about it. Um, so that will, I'm really hoping will come. I betting yes, um, but super, super fun. Um, yeah, they've just been doing a really good job. And maybe just to jump in there and, and hopefully make you smile, Jackson. I mean, one of, one of the things that we're doing, you know, we're, we're thinking about like, when is the right time to roll out programs? Because we want to make sure that the programs that we're offering, that we're able to offer at a high level. Um, and, we're, and the way in which we're thinking about offering programs is really listening to the students. What is the place where kids are really interested? Uh, and we heard um, from both our girls and boys, a, 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 you know, a, a deep interest in having a soccer team. And we were able to assess that there will be enough people. And so next next year, will be our first year of having a Hillbrook soccer team and excited for um, everyone here to hopefully join in and, and, and make that a great, um, great team. Um, Vivi, how about for you? Um, so for one of our exploratory classes, I was able to take um, an art class at Visual Philosophy. And through that, I learned about their metalworking program. And so actually starting this week, I'll be uh, taking um, a bus to visual philosophy and take classes there, which will be really fun. And basically, and it's like a way of using um, the city as a classroom, not just at school, but like after school. When, when you shared that with me uh, a couple of days ago that you were doing this movie, I was like, our, our students are so curious and mature already. Um, and that we are seeking opportunities and making them work, figuring out how to do that is, is truly exceptional. Um, a, maybe a less, uh, less interesting question, but a question that's really important nonetheless uh, is, you know, we have, as, as people heard, we have folks coming from lots of different towns across a pretty wide geographic area. Uh, and, and curious to hear, how do you get to school? Because that's a question that we hear quite a bit from folks and um, Vivi, maybe you could start and then other folks could chime in as well. Um, so I take uh, Caltrain every morning and then uh, most afternoons I take um, the train back. Um, and it's just a really great experience because it's kind of a place reserved not to talk about homework or do homework. It's just like a time to relax and talk with friends. And there's been like a community that's developed and I've made a lot of close friends on the train and also strengthened bonds with friends I already had. Thanks, yeah. Vivi. Um, anyone want to share other ways that you're getting to school just to, so we get a diverse range of answers? I mean, I can add on to that. I also take the Caltrain. Um, I, 
I totally agree with Vivi. It's we we've kind of said no talking about homework on the ride back. Wait till we get home so we can talk about just life, um, which has been really really nice for me. Um, I've made so many friends just like people that I might not normally hang out with in the school day, I'm able to hang out with uh, on the train and build really close connections. Yeah. I can, um, I can add on for like the Los Gatos kids, kids and stuff. Um, there is a van that runs from um, the Los Gatos campus that I know a lot of the kids who live in like the Los Gatos Saratoga area take um, that comes to school and it comes every morning. And it also um, there's a van that goes back to the school every afternoon. Um, and that's really awesome. Very, it's like super efficient too. Very great. I live in Saratoga and I have uh, the, the boring answer of my mom drives me. <laughs> uh, I have something. So sometimes my mom does drive me or sometimes I take the shuttle to Deardon and because I live in San Jose, I just walk home from Deardon because it's closer than the school. And then in the summer when it was a lot warmer out and didn't like rain, I would sometimes ride my bike to school. So. Thank you all. Yeah, we're working really hard with our uh, transportation team to ensure that getting to and from school is, uh, is as easy as possible for families. Cause we wanna make sure that if this is a school that, that you wanna attend and we hope that it, that it is that, that sort of distance or, or, or you know, transportation doesn't become an impediment. Um, so, so now um, sort of a, a, a big fun question is, uh, which could go a lot of different directions. I'd love to hear, you know, what, what is your favorite thing about the school? Um, I can start if um, no one else wants to. Um, I think it's just, I, I forget how like unique our school is sometimes because we'll like go through a normal day of classes. We're like pretty used to this like school year by now. And then someone will point out, they're like, huh, we go to school in Adobe World Headquarters and we're just like casually learning here. And I feel like that's sort of very representative of Hillbrook and like just it's always like there's something strange around every corner. Like you'll come to school and there will be a fire drill and like Adobe workers are passing out ice cream. And it's, it's just very strange and it's very fun. And like the setting is just super interesting. So that's definitely fun. Yeah. You experience something unique every day. I can add to that. Um, so I find my fa my favorite part is just kind of bumping into everybody every day. It's kind of made our community like so much stronger, um, having kind of a smaller space, but it's been really nice just to kind of, you, you can't miss a single person during the school day. Um, you all are so closely connected that yeah, you, you can't miss anyone, which is, which is really nice. And then yeah. Yeah. Oh, that that uh like having a smaller school and like one with like such a strong community was something I was really um hoping for because like I came from a small school where I kind of knew everyone and I would see everyone every day but I feel like our community at Hillbrook is even stronger just because we're like a founding class or and like and so yeah I'd say one of the things about it that does make us a strong community is I feel like everyone's just really kind here like i genuinely mean it is that there's like i can't think of mean people like i if i wanted someone to not be kind i'd have to come up actively with reasons on why they're not kind it can't just be look at them look at how unkind and bad they are and i think that's why having like a small community is so great because i'm like spending a lot of time with like all of these awesome people and i if it's like it, like we get new seating and i get a new partner I'm like 99% of the time, I'm like, oh my God, I would, I'm with uh, Millie. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do awesome. And I think that's just a really special thing about our community. Um, so something for me isn't actually a physical thing about the school, just going to school in general. Like last night I was telling my dad about my schedule for today. And then all of a sudden I just like said, oh my gosh, I love school. And then he just had like the biggest smile on his face and like made both of us laugh. But I think that's probably my favorite thing about it. I'm getting to say I love school uh, is, isn't something that everyone gets to say. Uh, and and one, of, one of my favorite things, um, 
one of my favorite things uh, during the school day uh, is, is being there early in the morning. And I, and I sit out um, in the front entryway um, just because I love to watch sort of the pulse of students, the, the train kids coming and then the, uh, the Los Gatos kids coming, uh, walking into school and almost always kids are smiling, laughing, kind of coming in with this amazing energy. Uh, and, and that is so different from most schools that, that I have observed. And, and it really is a testament to the, the work that our faculty are doing, the commitment to our students and, and the culture that is migrating up from our JK-8. I mean, we are, I think, the only school in the country that has laughter in its mission statement. Um, so the final question um, that we're going to ask uh, that I'm going to ask. And, and then um, for folks that are watching, if there are any questions that you have for students um, or, or for me that you would like to, um, please, please add questions in the comments and we can go through some of those. Um, but the final question that I'll ask uh, is, is this, you know, as, as families are beginning to make up their minds about what schools um, or what school they would like to attend next year, um, I would love to hear from you what would you what would you really want a prospective student to know about what it's like to be a student at Hillbrook? Um, well, I think I would personally want them to know uh, how awesome our teachers are. Um, like they keep class uh, exciting and like engaging, as well as it's like not just them talking like at you. You're also like having discussions in class, and um, one of our like our science teacher, um, he'll often didn't say like our t your teachers are just so awesome. Like not just as teachers, but like they're just also really awesome people. And I've also experienced this by just chatting with them, and like they're like open to like conversation, and it's just really um, it's just really fun to have teachers who you can like you're not afraid of, I guess. Um, adding on to that, I just want to say how like tightly knit our community is. Um, I'm just really glad that I'm in a place where I can just kind of like talk to anyone and like, you know, see everyone every day. Uh, that's really great. And I that's one of the aspects that I absolutely love about it. Yeah, um, I feel like this has been like repeated a number of times that it really does. It feels like family, like it's so close knit and you just talk to everyone and you see everyone every day. It's like, it, it creates an environment where, like, I cannot imagine going to another school, like, and not having, like, not being able to, like, walk down the hall and, like, know everybody and, like, hear about how their day is going and, like, just having that level of, like, personal connection with everybody. I'd say people, like, are, like, care here. And I feel like we care about learning, like, above grades. Well, we care about that, too. We do care about learning. And I feel like we're like going to school and like half the time we're like excited to learn. And I think one of the better things is our teachers are excited to teach and they want to teach us and they're ready. And they're like, sometimes like uh, during lunches, I just overhear the teachers talk about how excited they are for the assignment that's coming up that they made for our class. And it's just really sweet. Um. Classes are challenging, but they're so much fun. Um, I feel like all teachers have made it super, super interactive. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, the teachers are so good, it's it's kind of hard to believe. Um, uh, I mean, you kind of already heard this from everybody. Uh, it, it feels like a family. Um, it doesn't feel like we're kind of going to school. It just kind of feels like we're going to kind of another home. Um, which is really, really nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I have goosebumps hearing you all speak about that. I mean, like hearing your answers are, uh, I mean, it's, it's, you are living, uh, you are living our core values of be kind, be curious, take risks and be your best. Um, and one of the things in terms of taking risks and being your best, um, you really, students, adolescents really can't take effective risks if they don't feel grounded, if they don't feel safe and included and part of the community. And what you heard, um, and thank you all, and you know, what you heard from them is like, this is a place where students feel deeply seen, uh, deeply cared for, deeply known, and, and through that are then able to take these big leaps, these academic leaps um, to, to further this growth, academic growth, social growth, uh, to become their best. Uh, and 
and again, this is we're in the early journey uh, with each of each of our five students here. Um, only a couple months in, and, and so much growth ahead of us. Um, so at this point, I, I want to um, bring Marisol up, who's going to MC some of the questions uh, from the audience. Thank you, uh, folks who are putting some questions in. Feel free to add some more if, if you'd like to um, have your questions answered. Marisol, I think you might still be muted. Ah, there we go. Yes. Um, yeah. In like my 20 years of teaching, um, I haven't heard a student say, I love school with that amount of enthusiasm. So just know that like everything you're all saying, like with the thoughtfulness and whatnot, like as an educator for 20 years, it just like it, it, it brings joy to my heart to hear you all speak. So thank you. And so we're going to start with some of the questions from um, some of our viewers. Um, actually, uh, one of our questions that was partially answered in our comments, um, Mike, I don't know if you if you may want to just expand a little bit about the question about um, are there honors and AP level classes available? What does that look like uh, programmatically at our school? Yeah, thanks. Um, like like most of our peer schools, uh, you know, schools like um, Nueva and Crystal and, and Lick Wilmerding, um, you know, these peer schools that are great independent schools, like them, we, we do not offer AP courses, uh, but we do offer advanced studies courses. Um, and the reason is, is that we want more freedom in what we're teaching. And we actually believe that and, and know that the advanced studies courses that we're offering um, will, will reach above and beyond that which the APs do. Um, Students can begin taking advanced studies as early as ninth grade, though most students will begin in 10th or 11th. Uh, and I'll give a specific example. Um, you know, you heard Maya talking about, you know, choosing the school for the academics. And in particular, she wanted to be able to take a lot of math uh, and, and, and push on really hard. And, and currently I'm getting to teach four students in an advanced studies math course, which is a multivariable class. Um, do we expect all students to do that in ninth grade? No, but for those that, that can and want to, we offer that. Uh, and so we have, we, the way in which we build our advanced studies courses are what we think are critically important for students to know, what's the expertise of our faculty, and what are the interests of our students. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the next uh, question looks like uh, Calvin has a question about how, how do students find mentorship for their projects uh, at Hillbrook Public School? Um, maybe before, I'll, I'll take that question, but before I answer about like how we find mentorship, um, I, I wonder Chloe, if you could talk about in the civics in action, you know, what was, what, what type of mentors uh, and and experts were you able to engage with? Um, yeah, there were um, there were a number of really interesting people we got to talk to like throughout the course of civics in action. Um, some of the ones that like immediately pop into my mind is um, Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren came in and talked to us about um, like California politics. Um, ben Young, who is the chief of staff to the um, Cindy Chavez, uh, who is, yeah, she's really cool, um, came in to talk to us and she talked to us about the Vietnamese American Service Center, which is actually really, really cool. I ended up like, doing kind of a documentary on that. Um, this, was, this was a while ago. Um, we got the opportunity to speak to several people who work in like, um, the private sector around like, homelessness and like, um, a couple of people, people at the, um, like, who work for the city, who also work on homelessness. Um, we met with uh, Connie Alvarez, who works with the um, like local small businesses. So we got to meet with a lot of people, and a lot of them actually offered to film like interviews or stuff with us and give us further advice for um, our documentaries or our TED Talks, which were our final projects for the um, immersive period. Thanks, Chloe. When we did our fall immersives, we had over 40 experts coming and working with students. And, and to the question of like, how are we working to do that? Um, you know, what we have found is that um, folks in San Jose have been eager to connect with us. And, and we feel this as, you know, building reciprocal relationships, having students um, engage with, 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 with nonprofits, um, with communities. Uh, and, and figure out ways where where that partnership can be ongoing and enduring. Uh, we have a, a team of, of adults that are currently working on building out an expansive list of, of um, companies that will be opening their doors for internships that will begin junior year, uh, as well as for some of our experiential learning that starts in tenth grade. Uh, and so, so that has been you know an enormous amount of effort where we're you know reaching out to those that we know to to create meaningful, relevant, real-world learning for our students. 
Thank you. Thank you for that answer. Um, the, the next question is, um, what do you find to be the biggest challenge of being a founding student? And I'll throw that out to the students. Does anyone want to answer that? Like, what do you find to be the biggest challenge? Yeah. I, uh, actually, Maya, do you want to answer? Yeah. Uh, I find the biggest challenge is uh, the fact that, like, I am doing everything a normal student would. And I have to also like build things cause like I volunteered to b help build things and build uh, programs. And I find, well, that doesn't give me a lot of time to manage. I'd say that's my challenge is time management, but I think I've been able to like balance everything really well. Cause yeah. Thank you. Anybody else would like to answer that question? Yeah, actually I can. Um, yeah. I find the main, um, like the risk that I took when I was applying for the school and I knew that I was taking this risk was having like mentors, like seniors in your class, um, kind of guiding the way up. But I really like how we've kind of taken that and we're, we're going to be the seniors of our class. Uh, even though we're all the same age, we're going to have to pull each other up. Um, and we, we've done that really well. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, great. Okay, so um, the next question is, um, so it looks like there are th that there are classes taken around the city, um, and are they Hillbrook catered classes? Mike, would you like to take this question? Sure. I, I if if I understand the question, I think it's a it's. Um, it's Yes, and so you know we we started the year and well we start and end the year with our immersive classes. These are three week you know um, intensive courses where students are studying one thing over that time, uh, and we began the year um, with a three week course focused on social impact with with San Jose as as our lens, uh, and so we had three courses. Uh, each student would take one of them. There was a there was a course in civics and action, a course in art as activism, and a course uh, in water. And, and these were designed by our faculty, um, sort of shared essential questions, uh, and students were um, exploring and learning all throughout San Jose. Um, in addition, you know, you, you also heard Vivi talk about um, the course that she took at the School of Visual Philosophy. So during our exploratory classes, these are our, um, courses that meet twice a week, they're a quarter long, um, they are ungraded, untranscripted, uh, and uh, non-homework bearing. They are designed to really just spark curiosity to sort of uh, push forward this love of learning that we know all of our students hold. Um, some of those courses take place on our campus uh, and some of those courses are taking place throughout the city. Um, you know, we have kids taking classes at the School of Visual Philosophy. We had a yoga class that was that was happening off campus as well. And so we're, um, as we are thinking about our place in San Jose in this first year, we're, we're thinking about what are the strategic and smart relationships that we can build with these organizations that will continue to um, engage with year over year because we want students to see um, learning all around them. And, and I think Vivi did such an amazing job talking about that. She, she said, you know, she took a class through the school at the School of Visual Philosophy. And then while she was there said like, oh, there's this other thing I wanna learn um, and figured out a way to after school learn that additional thing. I mean, talk about like uh, sort of inculcating this this lifelong learning, this, this, this um, this interest in just exploration and, and our students already have that. Yeah, that's great, that's great, thank you. Uh, the next question, we're gonna take one from Jackson. It says, you talk about the benefits of a small community, but when the school grows, the community will too, right? So do you think it will be harder to hear and become friends with everyone or even have someone who you look at and you think, are they mean? And um, yeah, possibly Maya, would you like to answer this question? I think it was it was actually a, it's a little additive to what you were talking about earlier. I'd say I say uh, my goal really is to just hear the people who are important to me. I just came into me. I think the thing that was special about this year was I didn't expect a lot of people to become important to me. And I don't think I need to be friends with everyone to feel like I belong to school. Because part of being in the founding class is you, your roots are there. You're like, you are some of those. And when, if I do look at someone mean, I think, well, I do think that, I think the community is already strong enough if like a jerk came in. But I also think if a jerk came in, 
that I'm personally strong enough to like deal with them. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what I would say. And I think in terms of hearing people, I don't need to hear everyone. I just need to hear what's relevant to me. Thank you. Great. I can actually add to that um, real quick. Uh, I think it will, it'll, it'll grow as we grow. Um, but I feel like the community, it takes a very specific person to want to go to school. Um, and that person kind of has to take some risks to go to a school like this, to be part of the first four years. Um, and I feel like that specific style of person isn't going to be your typical student. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, the next question that we have um, is coming from Grace. Uh, what's uh, the one piece of advice you would give to the current eighth graders that are planning on joining the Hillbrook High in September? Anybody else want to take that? Maybe. Um, yeah. I can say a quick thing. Um, I feel like especially if you come to Hillbrook High, just not to stress too much. I remember like the week leading up to the first day of school, I was so nervous. Like, oh, what is everyone going to be like? What's going to happen when I first get there? But then when I got there on the first day, we were all sitting in a circle in one of our classrooms. And I just felt like it was like more relaxed. I like it calmed my nerves. And then when we got into the immersive, I just started having so much fun. So just try not to sweat anything too much. <laughs> Great, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, the, the next question we have is, have you thought about what you'll be doing this summer? Will Hillbrook be offering any summer programming for high school? I think, Chloe, would you like to answer that? Um, yeah, so I think one of the really great things about Hillbrook is they like provide you with um, like advice for taking opportunities that it wouldn't like would be really hard to ascertain like on their own. So this summer, um, judges actually helped me like work on this, but I am um, currently getting a research internship with a professor of inherited cardiovascular disease at Stanford. Um, and that is what I'll be doing over the summer and I'll be working in a research lab and judge helped me like go through the steps of trying to get that position and it was super helpful. And he's like offered to do it for like a bunch of different students. And he's, he's so great. And this is the last time I talk about science, I promise. <laughs> Great. Uh, Mike, did you want to add anything to, the, to that piece about the programming? Uh, well, I'll just say, you know, one of the things that, that we have had for quite a long time uh, at the Los Gatos campus for the lower middle school is a, is a really robust summer programming. Um, and that is something that we'll be developing um, ideally this summer and certainly in summers in the future. Um, but, but we have a number of students who are doing some continuation of learning. So a couple of kids who are taking some additional math classes through us over the summer. Um, I think we're gonna have a, um, uh, some, some courses as well that teachers are piloting in the summer so that folks can get a chance to, to see what it's like. Great, great, awesome. And um, this is gonna be our last question. So I see there's a lot of questions in the comments and um, I can email you all some of the answers to the questions. But our last question for tonight will be, um, Mike, um, how many classes can a student take and what is the homework load per day? Well, I'll answer the first part, and then I'd love to hear what the students have to say about the second part. Okay. Um, in terms of how many classes that we take per day, one of the things that I mentioned earlier is that when we were designing the school, you know, we, we took um, wellness really seriously. And so um, thinking about wellness, belonging, and engagement as driving tenants for how we were thinking about our um, entire program, specifically about our schedule. Uh, and so we have students can take six classes um, and no more. Uh, and and that that was done re quite intentionally um, because we don't want students to feel like we just need to do more and more, um, which, you know, as Denise Pope said from Challenge Success, that we're getting students who are overloaded and underprepared. So rather we have um, six classes in, in a year uh, and three classes meet per day, um, which means that every night you're only working on um, a certain amount of, of homework. Uh, and I'd love to hear from students, like, what does that homework range typically look like uh, and, and maybe we could hear a couple different answers. Yeah, Chloe? Yeah, I am. Um, I think it really varies per night. I know with like a lot of the weekends, some classes don't meet until the next Tuesday. So you get sort of like an extended period. Usually homework's really late on Mondays actually, because you do all your homework for that Tuesday class over the weekend. So there's nothing to do. Um, and then I think 
homework's like typically around 45 minutes a night. It says that in the handbook. It's not supposed to go over. Um, but I really think that homework can, like, you can take it as far as you want it to. Um, and like, if you really want to just shoot above and beyond because you really care about something you're like doing, if it's like an English assignment, you really care about a science assignment, you really care about, like, sure, you can spend more than 45 minutes on it. But like, 45 minutes is sort of the standard. I can say something about it too. Um, although it's like it is 45 minutes per class, like each night, it doesn't really feel like that because it's not busy work. It's like actually work that like engages you and is like interesting. So I often forget that it's been like 45 minutes or like an hour and I like continue working on it for longer. And it's just, yeah, it's awesome. Anybody else? Yeah. I do want to just round out that that answer that I began with, which is six classes uh, in an academic year, but really six classes in, in the sort of standard classes, um, the standard week. With the immersives that begin and end each year, those are also transcripted UC approved courses uh, that add sort of the addition of, of, of one class. And so each year students will take the, sort of the equivalent of seven classes. Thank you so much. And for all the other questions, we will answer them through email. I'll be connecting with you all. And students, thank you so much for your thoughtfulness and your responses and just seeing the enthusiasm and excitement that you all have about um, expanding our school and just being part of collaborating and building some of these systems and cultures of our school. It's really great to see you know, you all speak about that in your experience and be so excited about that. Um, so for now, the last piece is we're gonna give you some information about some admissions. And so let me uh, pull up some information that um, we have a lot of few dates coming up that are, let's see. Yeah. And so you'll see that the application deadline is coming up really soon. It's February 2nd. So here are some key dates to note regarding our admission process for the academic year. And as a reminder, Hillbrook does not require you to submit an application for you to sign up for a visit day. Yes, it's January, but we still have like three, uh, three visit days uh, at the end of January and very early February that you can sign up for. So your uh, family has still has time to sign up, sign up for visit day and submit the application. And if for any reason you're having difficulty getting school records or teacher recommendations, please contact us directly at the admissions at hillbrook.org and we can figure out how to best help you with your application. And lastly, uh, for those families applying for flexible tuition, the flexible tuition decision will come at the same times as the admission decision. Right? So we look forward to having more communication with some of you about the application process. Please re reach out if you have any questions regarding the application process up to this point. Right? So thank you, everyone. This wraps up our formal program for tonight. And we thank you for joining us and have a great evening. <laughs>